Switcher Certificate in part association with Change Cars. Change Cars is a trusted online website because they work with trusted dealers and the best insure in South Africa. Discovery Insure. Welcome back to Switcher South Africa. I'm back yet again with the Ford Everest Platinum. So we've done a series of the of the Ranger of the Rangers. Now it's time to test the the, the what an SUV based Ranger is, and this is it. So I like this specific one so i asked for ford to give me the platinum first and then we'll work our way down so we're gonna get the platinum first and then we're gonna get the, the wild track and then obviously we'll see the xlts and everything else but for now we're with the we're with the, the platinum and honestly you can see how how amazing it looks it looks beastly it gives off that hoodman vibe you know and i essentially like this over the bucky unless obviously ford decides to take out the the ford ranger platinum then is something else but otherwise i like the look of this vehicle it looks amazing it gives all that vibe so up front you don't get out a black grill you get chrome detailing on the side you get platinum writing over here so that screams luxury you know you know that that's that luxury feel at the bottom obviously you get that bass plate underneath and then moving on to the side profile of the vehicle like i said in the Kia review i wish the wheels were a bit bigger but in this vehicle i do not wish any of that the wheels are perfect it's cussing on 21 inch wheels um obviously for off-roading is not the best thing but obviously you don't buy the everest platinum if you want to do off-roading you'll buy an xlt or but you can spec if you want the features and everything but not the wheels you can buy this and then obviously downgrade to the 18 inch or 19 inch for for the off-roading so ford does give you that that option because i've seen platinum i've seen everest platinum with different wheels smaller wheels and i've always wondered why so i asked Ford. they did say if you want to take the car off-roading if you want different set of wheels they'll give you different sets of wheels but i prefer it like this it looks amazing these wheels just look the part man doesn't doesn't look out of place it gives off that 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 Rotman, that Rotman vibe now let's go to the back and then i'll tell you what I, what, I, what, I, what I think about the back and then obviously we'll get inside show you the features of the vehicle and then cost of ownership then wrap up the video so moving on to the back i just like this car man you know i'm not gonna speak too much so you guys can see the car so at the back very minimal design ford didn't do extravagant things the car still looks amazing i like the look of the car here at the back so you get like cleared lights just here obviously like um read it, read it out so that you can see that this is the brake lights the reverse lights is here all of all the features and then you get platinum platinum writing all over the vehicle here so you saw it said everest platinum wear in front it said everest platinum wear at the back it will say everest platinum wear on the side so on the driver door and on the passenger door let me just double check if it does say on the plat on the passenger door and you know what it does say on the, on the passenger door but inside in case you forgot what you're driving it will tell you it's a platinum but for that let's get inside so you can you guys can see what i'm talking about so like i said in case you forgot what you're driving platinum there platinum there in case that is not enough in case that is not enough <laughs> platinum there and in case if that is not enough camera guy focus on the mats on the floor platinum there so obviously what you do on the right you do on the left so there's platinum here as well and obviously obviously where else is the platinum on the carpets at the back and i think that's all unless if i see something else i will tell you that's an everest platinum but for now let's speak about the interior and then when yeah you get inside the ford everest platinum you can you can see that it's premium firstly you get black roof lining i love that it makes the color very 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 good inside very dark inside especially with those tint as well gives off the hrutman feeling like I, like i keep saying so inside this vehicle you get you know obviously you guys have seen my previous videos the same um infotainment system i like it looks very beautiful very big the wireless apple carplay and android auto here's my phone wireless apple carplay and android auto is not laggy it gets the job done you can get into ways it'll do everything for you so i do like that about the vehicle and up front you get uh, a digital instrument cluster this one is uh, an, a bigger a bigger one compared to the other Everest lineup. So the Everest Wild Track, Everest Sport, Everest XLT get a digital instrument cluster, but not this one. This specific one is found in the in the Ford Ranger Raptor. Currently, it might be found in the Ford Everest. No, Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger Wild Track X that will be launching soon. I will tell you about that. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. But currently, right now, you can only get this digital instrument cluster in the Ford in the Ford Ranger Raptor and in the Ford Everest Platinum, the one I'm in. 
so you get that obviously it's the v6 everything else inside for is is familiar to ford no much difference compared to the ford ranges it looks it looks the same um bang on all of the sound system which which actually bangs the seats as well look amazing feels good as well it's a good place to be in a race, race sitting position and that's it from the front you don't get pedal shifters so if you're gonna change gears you change on the gear pedal shifters obviously you get it in the ford ranger raptor so now time to go to the back to show you the leg room and then i'll go in the, in the last row of seats to show you that leg room and that um headroom and i'll compare it to the kia sorento that we had on test or we still do have on test and then i'll let you know what's what and what's not so enough about this car let's go to the back so now we're at the back of this vehicle and it's a very nice place to be um i'm yet to sit at the back so this is actually one of the first first few times i've been sitting sitting at the back of this vehicle so leg room decent enough headroom decent enough someone taller than me i'm 1.73 meters tall someone will obviously be comfortable sitting here the seats as well this seat does recline does slide back and forth that's a good you get heated seats at the back that's a good feeling as well not every car has that but this is luxury You're using the ford everest platinum so obviously you need to get heated seats speaking about charging so in this vehicle you get a type a and a type c up front at the back you get a type a and type c so there's four charging ports and then you get a two pin socket where you can put in like a two two pin so you can put in your charger or your laptop charger anything that works the two pin if you have a, if you have a two pin adapter put that plug a three pin then you sort it here at the back so the seats at the back is the exact same type of seats in front in terms of the fit the fit and finish good feeling the sound system as well bangs from here at the back it doesn't just bang in front it bangs all over so now time to go to the third row of seats and tell you as comfortability there and then do my driving impressions and cause the bonus so now i'm at the back of the ford reversed i'm in the last row of seats so right as you can see my legs leg room it's okay headroom is okay it's only okay when this seat is moved to its forwards position sliding it to the furthest back watch right i'm gonna just do that now this is as far back as the seat can go obviously because i'm wearing sneakers and all but here's you can see it's already tight for me so this part with the seat slid to the back it's furthest back it's not for me it's not for an adult because this place is sh slow um, surely for kids you can put kids here um, adults you need to push the seat forward but at the same time when you do that you'll be compromising this person unless if you guys come to it, i think go 50 50 but it's not as spacious as the kia sorento i don't i am still trying to understand how kia managed to do that so at the third row seats the kia sorento is more spacious more comfortable place to be than this vehicle i've told you about the interior of this vehicle now time to speak about my driving impressions, cost of ownership, and then say voila. So now you guys join me inside the Ford Everest Platinum <clears throat> for my driving impressions of the vehicle. And honestly, if you've watched my Ranger Wild Track V6 review, you'll know how much I love the V6 platform that Ford has got into the into the current generation for into the current, current generation Everest. So I like I like the overall feel and the overall drive of the vehicle. It feels amazing. The V6 as well in this one is amazing. But obviously, when you get into the Everest lineup, you don't just get a V6. You get a 2 liter by turbo. Look, you're looking at it's pushing 154 kilowatts and 500 Newton meters of torque. This specific one is a V6 turbo diesel producing 184 kilowatts and 600 Newton meters of torque. And that you will feel it in this in this car because it gives you that push. So I did say that I do prefer. Well, I'm currently liking this more than the range obviously because of the attention and just because of the feel man it just feels amazing it just looks good it gives off that vibe i did say obviously when the ford does decide to launch the ranger platinum i might like that more but we never know so more to the drive of the vehicle look, looking at the fuel efficiency of this vehicle the lowest i went right was 11.2 11.2 11.1 11 i'm currently averaging a 12.5 and on one tech of this vehicle you're looking at 600 k's um, around there if, you, if you're pushing it, it should just be over 600 right now my range is saying 200 221 i've done 361.6 so obviously that's just under um 600 600 600 k's and obviously because i've been testing the car so i've been pushing the car here and there to feel that v6 um diesel this car comes with so ride comfortability this car comes with 21 inch wheels when i say 21 inch wheels to you you think 21 inch wheels the car will be uncomfortable but 
surprisingly enough, it's very comfortable. Going over speed humps like this now, it doesn't feel much. You put your foot down, the car just goes. I love that about this vehicle. So obviously, the sport and the, the sport, you're looking at smaller wheels and the uh, wild track. The XLT get, comes in at like 18 inch wheels. Obviously, that should be more comfortable and more suited for off-road capabilities or off-road use. Um, but this in the beginning of the video, you can opt this with those wheels. Um, but that's what the got to the, the guy the vehicle the suspension uses a 10 speed um, gearbox and I do like it um, because it, it skips gears it's seamless sometimes you don't even feel the gear change unless if you're doing this that V6 just gives you V6 power man I like that I like this car so time to speak about the things I like the things I don't like about the vehicle and then we will sum up the review across the ownership. So things I don't like about this vehicle. One, it has to be how so many things are within the infotainment system, right? So for example, if you don't faff around the infotainment system, you will not know. One, the auto hold of this car is within the infotainment system, but once you do get it, it will stay on the vehicle forever. So I do like that, but I don't like the fact that I had to faff around the infotainment system. They could have put a button just behind the electronic handbrake. That's one thing I don't like um in terms of you have to faff around the infotainment system something also figured it this car has a heater steering wheel and i only figured that out because i had to faff around the infotainment system that's the first thing i don't like that's the first thing i don't like about this vehicle in terms of faffing around the infotainment system the second thing i don't like obviously that's it comes with the price right not the price of the car it comes with when i say the price i mean the the engine this is a v6 fuel efficiency won't be as fuel efficient as the two liter which is understandable you'll be averaging between 11 and 13. that's what you'll be averaging that's the second thing i don't like about the car but it comes at a cost you know what you're getting yourself into that's the second thing i don't like about the car so the second thing the third thing i don't like about this car is i was actually surprised uh, is the third row of seats you don't get as much space as i expected so the, the third row is essentially just for kids you know um an, an adult grown person you don't sit there is that the third thing i don't like but at the same time can't really fault it because yeah it's one of those it's really one of those on to the good what do i like about the car the first thing i like about the car is that v6 that v6 is the first thing i like about the car the second thing i like about the car is obviously the overall feel fit and finish in the interior it feels amazing is the is one of the best places to be in the interior there's a second there's a second thing i like about the car the third thing i like about the car is the look it looks amazing inside it's very big it's very uh, very, very commanding in front the wheels as well man ah you guys are seeing the wheels i just like that about the car so i've told you that time to speak about cost of ownership cost of ownership if you finance this vehicle at 1.2 million rand that's around how much you, sh you should be looking at paying this car 1.2 million rand if you finance it with no deposit at an interest rate of 12.25 percent over a period of five years which is 60 months you're looking at paying 26,700 rand factor fuel into that for this car you should be paying around 1718 at most factor fuel you will be paying around 28,300 400 rand so it comes at a price a lot of things comes at a price and this car is one of those recommendation would i recommend this car over toyota fortuna as much as ford says we don't compete with the fortuna we're competing with the prado i'm here to drive the prado so i will not speak about the prado i'll speak about the fortuna because toyota says we're still competing with the everest so ford says we don't compete with fortuna toyota says we compete with everest so at that also you guys you, you guys are going to be saying no, but uh, Toyota, Fortuna, Ford, Everest territory. And because of that, I'm going to tell you which one I prefer and which one is better, obviously, overall. And for me, it's simple. Toyota fanboys might not like this, but Ford, Everest, way better. So I've told you everything, everything you need to know about the car. There's nothing more I can say. I'm signing out.